So in this video, I'm gonna go over button refurbishing on the emulator too. After 30 plus years of button pushing, it's more or less time to have the buttons replaced. The common issue is that the buttons will often double press or they won't press at all. So I bought these replacement buttons from mouser.com with the intention that I was gonna have each of the buttons replaced by a professional. However, I did a little research online and I discovered that it, the real main issue is with the contacts inside the button casing. Over the years, carbon begins to build up on the metal contacts inside the button and eventually they can no longer make their proper connections. You can see here I've decided to take one of the new buttons apart to show what its inner working should look like. Inside each button there's a metal touch plate and two contact posts. You can see everything in this one is shiny and new. There's the touch plate and there are the two contact posts. I decided that instead of having a professional remove each button and replace them with these new buttons, that I was going to just replace the metal touch plates on each of the old buttons, harvesting the parts from the new ones that I'd purchased. First of course I disconnected the power. Then I began by removing one of the button covers. After removing the old touch plate, you can see how much buildup has accumulated over the years on the metal contact posts. See the dark corrosion, you can't even see anything shiny there. So I needed to clean these things, but I didn't have access to any professional cleaning tools, so this jeweler's flathead screwdriver was gonna have to suffice. My plan was to scrape off the buildup with the little jeweler's screwdriver. However, I'm gonna take a moment here to point out an amateur decision I made regarding the correct place to store your spare parts in the work area. This is not the correct place to store your spare parts. As you'll see, I begin to scrape off the corrosion and it shakes the synth and down it goes. And here it is again in slow motion. As you know, the Emulator 2's casing is sloped, so if anything slides off of it, it's more than likely gonna go between the keys. So after taking the entire keyboard apart to retrieve that little touch plate, I decided it best to prop up the board so that I could work on it as a flat surface. Anyway, I thought it was worth mentioning to anyone who decides to work on an emulator too. So getting back to it, here's the entire procedure taking place on the transpose button. Note that there are two posts here that I clean. The first is the thick rectangular post in the center. I've sped up the footage here. The second is this thin post in the corner of the button housing. There are three other posts in there, but they're plastic. The way the button works is, the center of the touch plate is convex so that only the four corners support it inside the button casing. They sit on top of the three plastic posts in each corner and the one metal post in the fourth corner. But the convex shape of it keeps it from touching the thick rectangular post in the center. Then when the button is depressed, it flattens the touch plate, creating a connection between the thin metal corner post and the thick middle rectangular post. After repeating this procedure on every button, they now all function as they should. This really wasn't a difficult task at all. It didn't take very long to accomplish. The procedure was fairly quick. Uh, the buttons were not expensive for Mouser, and I got everything to working as it should. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped anyone having the same issue with the Emulator 2. And more videos to come. Bye for now.